folks, Ariel over here at Finest and Barely, who every time I get ready to make a video sitting by the wood stove decides that he is supposed to be the center of it. Anyway, today just a real quick something I wanted to talk about, especially as we head into the, the holiday season here, that I was thinking about because the other week I went and donated blood, which is something I do regularly and I have done since I was 16 years old. And I'm aware that one of the um, greatest shortage times of the year for blood banks uh, for all over the country here are, it's usually in December and January. People are often, I guess, busier with holiday stuff and just don't get around to donating. And maybe even there's more accidents and such that require blood donations to save people's lives um, due to all the extra travel and so on. But anyway, that's generally listed as one of the times when blood banks are the shortest on their donations. And generally when you look at surveys that folks have done um, for why people who could do not donate, the, the first reason listed is they never thought about it. So I just thought I'd do a little quick video so that some of you guys watching maybe would think about it if you never have. Um, blood donation, if you're not familiar with it, is the process of a healthy individual donating part of their blood. An average adult has about 10 pints of blood. Um, doing about one of those, a unit of blood is generally about a pint, to be able to be used by somebody else. Um, usually in some kind of traumatic or, you know, medical emergency that requires the other person to, to need blood. Um, like I said, I've been donating since I was 17 years old. The organization that oversees donations in the Rocky Mountains here is not actually the Red Cross for the most part. Um, the one that I donate through now here, I think I've done like 31 donations and I had some number with the Red Cross in Pennsylvania before I had moved west, um, and I, I don't have lost track of that. So anyway, I've donated blood quite a few times in my life, and I was partially inspired by my father, who had been donating blood for most of his life, um, and doing so quite regularly. If you're not familiar with the whole process, it's really pretty simple, and not scary at all unless you're completely uh, freaked out by needles or the sight of blood, but you don't have to look at it. Um, Anyway, how it generally goes is you go to wherever your local donation center is, and you can, if you don't know where that is, you can often find it. I think there's a website called americasblood.com where you can put in your location, and it'll pull up anybody who does that kind of thing that is near you, and, um, and find a donation center. In my area, it's usually hosted at a church or something like that, and there's a, a mobile a team that travels to different areas and does the blood collection. Anyway, so you make an appointment or not. Most of them take walk-ins. Appointments just are in line before the walk-ins in general in my experience, so it can save you a little time. And you fill out their paperwork. Um, the first time would probably take you a little longer, but after that they actually send me a little blood at donor card. It looks basically like a credit card that's got all my info on it um, already, so that saves me time in the future, and I don't remember how long it took me to get that the first time because it was so many years ago. But anyway, it lists fun little things like my blood type, which is O positive, which is the most common blood type there is, and is often needed for donations because it is one of the most common. Anyway, you go in, you fill out all the questions, they have to ask the same questions pretty much every single time, and there's a list of somewhat intrusive personal questions about behaviors that could affect the quality of your blood donation, and Typically, I, th I probably have most of them memorized at this point, but they're going to ask things about if you've had any accidental needle sticks, um, any uh, tattoos, vaccinations, anything that could have affected what's going on in your bloodstream, locations you may have visited in other countries um, due to the prevalence of some bloodborne illnesses in certain areas. Um, they're going to ask if you've ever been to prison. They're going to ask if you've ever traded money or drugs for sex or slept with anyone who did and so on. They, they can get a little bit personal, but they're going to ask the same questions of everybody every single time. The whole process usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour. The actual blood donation of giving blood takes me usually about five minutes. The rest of it is doing all the paperwork and then somewhat the waiting to be sure you feel good afterwards. Anyway, so you do all the paperwork, then they usually do a little needle prick in the tip of your finger, which is generally the only part that ever hurts later, um, just to get a little drop of blood and test your iron levels, because if your iron's not high enough, you'll probably be turned down for a donation at that time. And some people have kind of chronically low iron, 
My mother tended to. I'm not even sure if she does anymore. When I was growing up, she was very busy having lots of my younger siblings, and that probably had an effect on that. But some people have chronically low iron. In general, you do have to be over 110 pounds, and I think over 17 years old. The different organizations have slightly different um, requirements in those areas, but that's fairly uh, across the board. Um, and as long as your iron's high enough, and they're going to, you get like a mini little wellness checkup too, because they're going to take your blood pressure and your temperature and check your heart rate and all that kind of stuff. And at least the organization that I uh, donate through, Vitalant, which services a lot of the Mountain West here, um, and I assume probably most other similar places at this point have your whole donation history online where you can log in and look it up if you want to see a history of your cholesterol levels or temperatures or um, heart rates or blood pressure or any of that stuff. So that can be kind of cool if you want to do that because that's just a bonus that you get for donating. And then you go over and you relax in one of their comfy reclining chairs and they'll usually ask you which arm you want to donate from and I always say my left arm because <laughs> I'm right-handed so that's just easier. And I actually have a neat little line of track scars right there on the um, top of the vein because I've donated so many times so you can kind of tell exactly where it is and um, the, the nurse whoever he or she is will usually tell you you can look away now if you don't want to watch this and they slip a needle right in there almost if the nurse is good I almost never feel that um, it is it's funny because it's actually a fairly big needle sticking in your arm but it uh, it doesn't ever hurt half as much as this tiny little pinprick in the tip of your finger and that probably has to do with how many nerve endings are in your fingers versus in the uh, the crook of your arm here anyway that blood will and everything is sterilized they use brand new um, brand new needles and such for every single donation they've gotten very very good at the year over the years of making sure there's no kind of uh, spread of any disease to, to you, the donor, and anyway, you're, you usually have a little ball of something squishy to squeeze that kind of helps keep your blood moving as you're laying still in a chair, and you pump, pump blood out for, they say up to 10 minutes, usually I, I'm pretty well hydrated, um, it usually takes me like four or five minutes to, to pump out a pint of blood, then pull the needle out, put a little bandage around your arm, and uh, say go off and have some snacks and they usually request you sit in the waiting area for 10 to 15 minutes just to be sure you don't feel lightheaded or something before you drive out of there and off you go. And in the U.S. it is um, whole blood, it's not legal to sell, which that's another topic, but anyway, uh, donations are just given voluntarily. A lot of places do often do something in return, like some kind of point system you can redeem for rewards, or here locally they often some local business will give you a coupon for a free beer or a free pizza or, you know, something of that kind um, as a kind of a reward for donating. But the reason I donate is because I know it can help people. Um, for instance, it's, I have never personally needed blood myself, but hopefully I never do, but I certainly realize that could come up at some point in my life, and so as long as I'm healthy and able to donate, I figure I may as well, because it's something I may need at some point, and if not, I know people personally whose lives have been saved by a blood donation. Just earlier this year, um, one of my cousins had some complications right after giving birth to her second daughter, and it, I think it necessitated, I might be wrong on the numbers here, but I think uh, 12 units of whole blood, so she needed 12 whole blood donations because she was bleeding out so fast, that's more blood than you have in your body, so she was clearly losing blood quite rapidly and that saved her life and she is around and she is recovered and she's healthy and she's a wonderful mother to two lovely little girls who would be motherless if there was not somebody who had donated blood um, making it possible to save her life and I've known other people in similar situations so anyway just something to think about not everyone can give some people don't weigh enough some people don't have enough, high enough iron some people are excluded because of one of the other things in their history that could possibly um, create a, a a transmission of disease but depending on which figures you look at I found this a little confusing when I was looking it up um, people have different studies but it looks like between 2 to 10 percent of people who could donate blood in at least the states do so and like I said the most common reason listed for why somebody doesn't if they could is that they just never thought about it so no pressure or anything just wanted to throw it out there if you have never thought about it it's pretty simple pretty easy um, over, I probably have at least 40 some donations in my life now, though I've kind of lost track of the number. Uh, I've had twice now, I think, where I had complications where I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm over the weight limit, but I'm not a lot over it, and um, this is very rare, but there are a couple times when I've felt 
faint or lightheaded afterwards. Normally I do not. Uh, normally I can go right on about my daily business with no issues, but that is a possibility, just something to be aware of. So if you're planning to like climb Mount Everest tomorrow, I probably don't want to give blood the day before, but um, it, it can also have benefits for you. Some doctors are recommending that especially men, who's older men who tend to have higher iron levels, and women past the age of menopause who tend to also have higher, higher iron levels, um, it, can, it can reduce the excess iron in your blood because your body takes some time to make new iron when you have donated blood. So some people are recommended to donate blood purely for their own health. Um, despite the fact that it also helps others. And if, like I said, if I'm healthy and I can, I figure I may as well. So it's something I do regularly, usually five or so times a year. Most organizations limit you to every, um, here it works out to being about every two months before the, the mobile team that does the blood collection comes back again. Uh, so I think at the most I could give six times a year, and often there's one of those times that just falls on top of something else I have planned, and I'm you know, not free to, to show up. So usually it's about five times a year, but, um, that's, that's what I do. And I just wanted to encourage any of you guys who are healthy and able to, to maybe consider it, especially over the holidays when, uh, if you're not going to, you know, do it regularly, if you're just going to go and give it a try one time, maybe do it over the holidays here when they are tending to be in more short supply than other times. And yeah, that's that. I just like to, to throw out their encouragement to help everyone around us and let's all try to leave the world a better place than we found it in whatever little ways we can and that's just one little way that works for some people so something to think about you all have a lovely day and hopefully none of us ever need a blood donation Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.